making at the moment. Hello, little ones. Oh, there's a big scavenger at the back. Oh, this is another hyena den. Um, this is a den right on top of Rhino Ridge. And I didn't know about this den. This is the first time I've been here. But there are hyenas everywhere. I can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. And those are the only ones I can see. Now, of course, these hyenas are smiling, if they could, from ear to ear at the moment, because they are surrounded by a wildebeest. It's always funny, when, you, when you're driving through these big groups of wildebeest, you suddenly find a perfect circle. <laughs> it's always worth having a look in the middle. <laughs> and quite often there is a predator right there. A time of plenty. So Dave's just going to keep panning slowly around just to show you. Oh, so there's multiple. Well, it's the same den, but there's multiple holes they're utilizing. I just saw another little baby pop its head out of a different hole. And there we go. You can see migration all around. So there's an adult lying off to the left of us, and I just noticed a little there we go he's popped out now I got it one and you can see all the wildebeest in the background it's just incredible I am really liking this area at the moment Dave I think we're gonna have to come back here tomorrow Chitty Chatty Meg is wondering, hyenas don't kill their own food, do they? Well, and it's one of the biggest misconceptions about hyenas. Now, hyenas are of all the predators we get out here, of the larger predators. So, lion, cheetah, leopard, um, and hyena, pretty much. Hyena are definitely the smartest um, and the most social and with the most complex social hierarchies. Now, being the most social, they're, they're, they're quite well organized. And that enables them to even put pressure on lions on kills, even though lions are physically much, much bigger. And hyenas, if they decide to hunt, actually have a higher success rate than lions. And with the migration around, these hyenas will be doing a lot of their own hunting. But of course, if the opportunity comes where they can chase another predator off a kill, they will take that in a flash. And uh, they are the most incredible opportunists. So interesting thing. So modern day lions, modern day hyenas and modern day human beings all evolved around the same time and uh, in Africa. Uh, where in Africa is obviously one of those things that's always up for debate, but the latest um, research and, and, and findings, it seems like it was a, a simultaneous evolution of human beings across Africa. And uh, that would probably work the same for the lions and the hyenas. Now, we have a very, very close bond with lions and hyenas and i'm sure a lot of you sitting at home are going what is this egg going on about that can't be right now it is very very true if you look at the at the different dynamics uh, of human beings with these apex predators because of course we are also apex predators and we have been the dominant diurnal predator a lion during the day you can walk up to him they'll run away and in this area where there's been competition between people and lions for thousands of years far more than other parts of africa lions have a look at a maasai who's dressed in a shuka um, and they take off so if you ever want to be safe walking around in the mara put on a shuka the lion should leave you alone now uh, of course that goes to a very different thing um so even in, in the Sabi Sands, in Botswana, in Zambia, in Congo, uh, human beings during the day will walk up. You can walk up to lions quite safely and 99.9% .9 of the time they will run away from you or they'll give you a warning charge and give you a chance to escape. Now, we always want to go home when it gets dark. Now, it's, it's, it's actually a built-in subconscious safety mechanism. So 
we are dominant when we can see at night we can't see lions can see and a lion at night is a very different animal to a lion during the day and human beings just become part of the food chain just ask dave so we've been spending a lot of nights with lions and we've been with some skittish prides down in the south of the mara that during the day are a bit edgy but at night come so close that i have to shout at them and bang the door so get them away from the car they've even licked the bull bar a few times so it, it is a very interesting dynamic that lions are completely Complete different animal. They're much bolder at night. Hyenas are just lazy during the day, generally. Uh, hyenas are, are, are having that far sort of more evolved uh, intelligence than, than the big cats. Uh, they've learned that there's no need to try eat a person because people are messy things and we don't and we don't have all the tools to be able to crush bones and all sorts of stuff so then uh, we leave a lot of food behind that they are able to utilize and uh, hyenas uh, are not nearly as scared of man they're nervous of man but um, a hyena will walk up to you during the day or night they'll run off but they won't run off like a lion who gets a fright they'll run 20 meters 30 meters turn around look at you so, listen, 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 my friend, you can't catch me, and I know if I keep hanging around your house, you're going to give me a free meal. For me, it's one of the most fascinating things uh, about being out in the bushfield is, 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 of course, just seeing nature itself but also our relationship with nature and how uh, evolution has has tied us into different things i mean for example how wildebeest react to people how eland react to people how they'll run a lot further away from a person than a wildebeest or an impala um and in how in different areas over a relatively short period of time that that, that can change uh, and so learned behavior uh, that can actually become evolved behavior if it carries on for long enough and i think the, these little relationships that that play out and often without us even noticing is for me possibly one of the most fascinating things about being out in the wilds and uh, just being able to spend all my time uh, observing all these little nuances and not only between us and the animals between the animals Animals themselves. Oh, we've got a, curi a curious cub who's decided to come have a look. And then as soon as I sort of looked at him, he pretended he wasn't looking this way. I'm not interested in you. I wasn't coming to look at this car. I was actually looking at the wildebeest. And you're not that interesting. But of course, this den is not a den I know in it. And, and there's no roads up to this den. So I would say, especially if we came here in the, at night, the cubs would get very curious and actually come right up to the car. brave little fella of course it's easy to be brave when you've got about 20 of your 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 closest family members all around and one yelp of pain will send oof, absolute destruction in terms of snapping jaws descending on whoever decided to give that pain to you Okay, well, I'm going to keep heading up. I haven't, I'm so enjoying this part of the Mara. I haven't been here in so long. I'm going to keep heading up to the famous fig tree that the lions like to sleep in. And uh, who knows, could we be lucky enough to find a lion lounging in a tree? While we do that, we're going to go across to Taylor, who's going to be exploring the Mara very soon with an animal that you definitely f won't find lounging in a tree.